Welcome to our deep dive into the Gran Turismo series and what made the games so great. From their explosion onto the scene in the early 90s to their huge presence in the esports scene of the modern day. Our first episode goes all the way back to where it started, the original Gran Turismo. However, this wasn't the first game that creator Kazunori Yamauchi had his fingerprints on. Join us as we take a look at what kickstarted the epic franchise that we all know and love. The first Gran Turismo game was the culmination of five years' work for Kazunori Yamauchi and his small ten-employee team at Polis Entertainment, later to become Polyphony Digital. Although Gran Turismo wouldn't be released until 1997, the idea of the game was born early in the 1980s. As a teenager in Kashiwa, Japan, Yamauchi was immersed in the world of cars and vehicle tuning, but found the motoring video games of the era to be lacking. At the time, however, he was primarily interested in movie production, establishing a film society in his school before studying graphic design at university. Yamauchi eventually joined the PlayStation team of Shuhei Yoshida at Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporated and, with his own team, created the 1994 arcade kart racer Motor Toon Grand Prix. The bright, cartoonish game showcased the capabilities of the new console and immediately spawned a sequel in 1996. Underpinning both titles was a surprisingly advanced physics model. A hidden mode in the second game, called Motor Toon GPR, even let players drive an open-wheeled formula car and a stock car on the game's tracks. Combined with smooth and detailed graphics, Motor Toon Grand Prix 2 was a true Gran Turismo predecessor. Gran Turismo, however, was thoroughly groundbreaking. It featured a wide variety of licensed cars, from supercars and concepts, to station wagons, sedans and mundane hatchbacks, all of which could be raced together. Though none of the game's 11 tracks were actual locations, with licensed circuits not being part of the series for a few more years, the locations varied widely in length, difficulty, topography and scenery, showcasing cutting-edge graphics for the era. The main game mode featured ability tests, called license tests, to familiarise you with the game's physics model and to unlock more advanced racing series. Each vehicle had realistic tuning options to enhance its performance, allowing players to modify a pedestrian car like a Honda Civic to compete with a Honda NSX or even Nissan Skylines. Specialist high-performance cars, unique variants and fictional racing models were available for winning various race series and beating gold standard times in the license tests. Arcade mode featured a selection of the game's cars split into performance classes, A, B and C, and up to eight of the game's circuits available as a drop-in time trial or race mode. Progression was also available in arcade mode. As the player completed the tracks in easy, normal or hard modes, more vehicles and tracks could be unlocked, with an end credit sequence and a hi-fi mode, which featured three of the tracks with a higher refresh rate and a lower draw distance, also available for arcade mode completion. According to the Polyphony Digital website, as of September 2012, Gran Turismo had sold 10.85 million copies worldwide and has been credited for car manufacturers' decisions to launch models in hitherto untapped markets, notably the entire TVR range in Japan and the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution series in North America. Gran Turismo featured 11 fictional tracks, based on 8 different locations. All but one, the test course, was available in reverse, giving a total of 21 variations of circuits. Though fictional, the circuit's designs and landscapes clearly drew much of their inspiration from real-world venues. Grand Valley takes form of a large, purpose-built motorsport complex similar to Belgium's Spa-Francorchamps, Deep Forest is usually twinned with Germany's Black Forest and the Hockenheim Ring, Autumn Ring and Trial Mountain, assigned to Japan and Europe respectively, are similarly extra-urban. The two Route 5 tracks and Route 11 commonly draw comparisons with Tokyo's highway system, particularly the Wangan Shuto Expressway, though sectors of the tracks remain a peculiarly European feel, with Italian architectural touches. Last is the test course, which is just that, three miles worth of banked curve and unwavering straights to test your car's limits. One of Gran Turismo's innovations was its license test system, which served as both a tutorial and as a way to unlock higher value race series. The various tests taught the player the intricacies of the game's physics model, particularly the simulated differences between vehicles of various drivetrain types. 
It also introduced players to the circuits and variety of cars, from a mundane Mazda Demio to an intimidating TVR Griffith. Each test had three levels of grading. A bronze grade was merely any time achieved inside the minimum expected standard to pass that test. Silver and gold grades are gained by beating preset lower times. Achieving a bronze on every test in a license is the minimum requirement to gain said license. Achieving a silver on each test gained no additional reward. However, achieving a gold on every test in each license was rewarded with a special prize car. The core of Gran Turismo is, of course, racing. Alongside the arcade mode outlined in the introduction, the game has five different race areas. Memory Card Battle allows a two-player race using cars from the player's own garages. Time Trial gives players a two-lap standing start time attack run on any of the 21 courses, while Spot Race uses five tracks, Autumn Ring Mini, Deep Forest, Grand Valley East, High Speed Ring and Trial Mountain, and pits the player against a randomly selected grid. The two most significant areas are GT League and Special Event. GT League has a series of four events, which can be considered the career mode of Gran Turismo as such, because winning the final event unlocks the end credits. Special Event includes specialist races for cars with certain characteristics, and the three endurance races, where tyre wear and pit strategy become additional factors. These events are more lucrative, both in terms of prize money and of bonus cars, as bonus cars may be awarded multiple times. What brought the first Gran Turismo game recognition and acclaim, perhaps more so than any of its other characteristics, was the eclectic mix of real cars in a quantity never seen before in a racing game. Though there were just 10 manufacturers from Japan, North America and the United Kingdom in the original game, the car list covered almost all bases. Alongside the American sports cars of Corvette and Viper came the ordinary runabouts from Japan in the shape of Civics and Demios. Big, crushing cruisers from Aston Martin raced alongside Japan's most popular sports cars of the day, including Acura's NSX, Nissan's Skyline GTR, and Mazda's RX-7, introducing them to new markets of consumers who have never seen such models before. Each car could be modified in ways that mirrored how tuners work in the real world, with more efficient exhaust systems, forced induction systems, ECU upgrades, softer tyre compounds, and even weight reduction. The gearbox and suspension of each road car could be replaced or even changed for a minutely adjustable, highly variable race kit, allowing individual setups on each car and each track. Camber, tow, bound, rebound and even spring rates could be set, changing the behaviour and attitude of the car. Full racing modifications could also be performed, replacing large parts of the vehicle's structure while adding downforce generating wings and splitters, along with preset paintwork and decal schemes which drew inspiration from JGTC and JTCC cars of the day. Of course, Gran Turismo also featured genuine race cars, alongside some drawn from imagination. The special models available at dealerships included 1995 Le Mans entries from Nissan, Toyota and Honda, along with fictional racers from Mitsubishi and Mazda. A Le Mans Viper GTSR was also available as a prize car. Of particular note is the fictional Honda CRX Del Sol LM race car, a mid-engined variant of a front-engined front-wheel drive car. There's certainly plenty of elements that are still around in the most modern Gran Turismo titles, but which of these brought back the most nostalgia for you? Let us know in the comments and join us next time on GT Planet, where we revisit the epic sequel that really ramped things up for Polyphony Digital.